Okay, so earlier we stopped at talking about uh, median, which is the number that's right exactly in the middle in a data set that you've ordered from either small to uh, big numbers or uh, big to small numbers. Now, median is used in certain cases, uh, but not a whole lot usually in, in, um, in physical sciences. Usually we use the mean. Medians are useful if you're talking about uh, data sets that have uh, huge, uh, what we call outliers, which are basically numbers that would skew the distribution um, to a, a you know, really large or really small. A typical example would be if you're talking about median uh, house prices, for example, in the Los Angeles area. Uh, certain houses are so expensive that uh, you know, one or two of them they're in the millions of dollars range, they would uh, skew the mean, the average, right, to a larger than expected number, even though there's only one or two of these houses. But, you know, most houses are probably a lot lower than that, right, uh, than the actual mean if you calculate it. So then a lot of times people would use median uh, in order to get a more accurate, uh, you know, picture of what the average is. Now the third quantity that you'll be dealing with in terms of determining precision and accuracy is something called the standard deviation. This is a statistical quantity and there's a formula for it which I'll show you in the next slide. But the standard deviation, um, you know, just in terms of the meaning of this quantity is a measure of the spread of the data around the mean. What do I mean by spread? Just exactly what it says which is that how much of a a deviation do you have uh, around the average, the mean, okay? Now, if you imagine it, uh, the idea of a spread looks something like this. The line in the middle right here is your mean. And then usually data sets, um, you know, particular uh, if you just collect measurements again and again and again, uh, in theory, the measurement should be represented by a curve that looks like this, and this is what we refer to as the bell curve, okay, or a Gaussian distribution. Uh, it's not that important for you to, to know that necessarily, but the idea is that if you're just doing measurements, you know, let's say a hundred times you're measuring the same thing again and again and again, you should get um, a mean, and then the measurement should be distributed over this curve right here. A lot of the measurements would be right around the mean, but there's some measurements that are a little bit further away from the mean, and there's some measurements that are really, really far away from the mean just because you're making these measurements again and again, so you're making errors, random errors creep in here and there, okay? The idea of a standard deviation is it's a measure of this um, spread of this curve, okay? So this is one type of curve. You can imagine maybe some curve is really, really, um, you know, low here. So you have very small tail and then and then it goes up just to the peak, just near the mean and then it goes down again, okay? So that would be the type of measurement that we like, right? It's a measurement that basically all the values are centered around the mean. That would be something that would be precise, right? But the larger the spread is, so if you have something that's really, you know, huge spread right here, right, even bigger than this, that means that the data is all over the place, okay, which means that you're really not being precise when you're making that measurement, okay? So that's the idea of standard deviation. It's kind of a measure of the spread right here. You can calculate standard deviation using this formula that's shown right here, which is the square root, the sum of each individual measurement. So remember that you have these data points, right? So each individual data point subtracted from the mean and then square that quantity and divided this by n minus 1 and take the square root of that will give you the uh, standard deviation quantity. And again, that's, you know, it's, it's basically, I don't want to get too much into how this equation comes about because it's really not our, uh, Im important for our purpose here in chemistry, but we just want to know that this tells you basically how big, how much the data is spread over the mean, okay? Now, for a normal, what we refer to as a normal distribution, normal in this case means this bell curve type um, distribution, um, in theory you're supposed to have 68% of your data points within one standard deviation away, okay? And 95% of the data points should be within two standard deviation away. So if you look, here's the mean, the green part is one standard deviation away, the blue part is two standard deviation away. So if you do 
mean plus minus two standard deviation, it should cover 95% of your data, okay? Um, and then if you do mean plus minus three standard deviation, it should cover 99% of your data, okay, in theory. So a lot of times what we often use, and this is also the, the, the definition we would use for um, outliers in this class, is that any data point that is um, beyond two standard deviation away, so either uh, mean minus two standard deviation or mean plus two st standard deviation, in other words, data points in this area right here or in this area right here would be considered outliers, basically points that are so off from the mean and there might be something wrong with those points you have to kind of take a look at them okay so how can we use this concept of standard deviation uh, mean and median to um, quantify the error that we have in our precision and accuracy well standard deviation as I said earlier it's related to precision right you really want the standard deviation that's fairly tight around the mean you want data that's you know fairly tightly distributed around the mean you don't want a, a very broad distribution. So the way we're going to quantify percent error in our precision is to calculate the standard deviation and then compare that to the mean. Okay, so it's standard deviation over mean times 100%. The smaller this number is, the less your error is in precision. The bigger the number is, the more error you have in your precision. Basically, the broader your distribution is. Okay, so that's kind of the idea of uh, this calculation right here. As far as accuracy is concerned, usually the percent error is expressed in using this equation, which is EV here stands for experimental value or sometimes experimental average, right? Depending on what it is we're trying to calculate. So if you have an average value, you would use that as your experimental average minus your true value okay and um, take that as an absolute value just the positive uh, number of it and then divide it by the true value times a hundred percent that gives you how far off you are from the true value okay so if this difference is very small then your percent error is really small that means the data is pretty accurate but if this number is big then the uh, percent error is big then data is not that accurate okay in the next video I'll show you an example of how to go through the uh, calculations of all of these quantities.